thank you all for joining us this afternoon. My name is Danae Bennett, and before I get started, I do want to quickly introduce the rest of our team. We've got MJ Shen, Amanda Trapp, we've got Justin, uh, Lulu Wang, and Isabel. Um, and as we start today, we're really going to take you through a journey uh, on how we came up with our next killer app and specifically how we were able to utilize NetBase in all of our research in order to see where the need was and what the killer app should be. So as we get started, we needed to look at a couple of different things to, in order to determine what this next killer app was going to be. One of those things are, what are the top five devices for mobile apps? Uh, if you're looking to start an app, you really need to know what device you're going to put it on and what platform you need to develop it in. We also needed to look at what are the top five app categories? Uh, which is the easiest category to get into? Where is there a need? So let's talk about what are the top five devices for mobile applications. Uh, if you look at this passion index, this has quite a few different devices that came up when we initially started this search. As you can see right away, iPhone and iPad are the ones with the most amount of buzz and of course have the most positive sentiment. And there's a lot of other smaller players within the device category. But we needed to get to the top five. So those top five were iPad, iPhone, iPod Touch, which was a little bit surprising to us, Windows Phone, and then the BlackBerry. Again, all of them mainly positive with the exception of BlackBerry. Uh, but again, with iPad and iPhone, this was a really important revelation because as you start developing an app, if you only want to pick one platform to initially start, you obviously want to go with the most popular. So important though is how did we use NetBase to find these things out? Um, a lot of us offhand probably would have said Android would have been on there. Um, and we all had our preconceived notions of what those devices would be. But again, we needed to use NetBase to see what was being talked about. So what we did was we searched sound bites for tablets and smartphones. We actually started topics within NetBase for tablets. And we looked at all the tablets generating buzz. We then also looked at smartphones and all of those smartphones that are generating buzz. And then we're able to compile a list and pick the top five from there. We searched each product separately to get the true amount of buzz. How we were able to do this was use alternative names. So for the iPhone, people may have said iPhone 4, iPhone 4S, all of these different things, which they were still talking about the iPhone. So we needed to make sure to include those in the alternative <coughs> names. Context. This was a really important thing. We weren't looking just for the most popular tablet or the most popular smartphone, but really the most popular tablet for mobile devices, the most popular smartphone for mobile applications. Uh, so we wanted the context of mobile app or apps, something where they were actually talking about the apps located on their tablet or on their smartphone. We also wanted to include personal narratives um, and exclude news and professional reviews because we really wanted to know what the consumers were talking about, not what the news and the professional journals were talking about. <coughs> we also used the wizard within NetBase to exclude any uh, words that really didn't make sense under our topic. So this great infograph really does show you the top five devices and kind of says it better than any of us could. iPhone generated 15.9 times more buzz than the fifth leading uh, device, which is the Windows Phone 7. Um, so in the top five uh, devices, three of them are Apple <coughs> products. Um, on the iOS platform. So you can see here iOS makes up 83% of the sound bites. So this was a really important fact to find, again, to let us know how important it is to pay attention to the iPhone and the iPad and make sure our app ends up in the iStore. Again, though, we wanted to compare positive and negative sentiment. Obviously, if something is having a lot of buzz out there, but it's really negative, we don't necessarily want our app to be on that. Luckily for us, we found all five devices are overwhelmingly positive. Uh, but what is interesting is the iPhone and the iPad uh, even have more negative sentiment than the other three. Uh, so again, iPhone and iPad, even though they have negative sentiment, is still the top devices. 
So let's talk about the top five app categories, again, in order to make sure that we align our app in the right categories. Uh, so we did this a couple of different ways. First, we looked at the top 10 applications themselves, which MJ is going to go over momentarily. And we saw that those top apps actually fell into the following categories. So social networking, reference, lifestyle, entertainment, and photo and video. If you uh, blow up the BPI a little bit more, this gives you a better picture. You can see that the photo and video apps, by far, is the most popular and talked about category. Social networking was actually a fairly distant second. But what we noticed was lifestyle, entertainment, and reference apps, even though those top uh, applications are in that category, the category as a whole really isn't generating that much buzz. So we didn't believe that those are a true indicator of the top five categories. So what did we do next? Oops. Something was missing. Uh, we all started thinking about what do we have on our phones? What do we have on our tablets? What are we using? And we thought of some other categories. Navigation, music, weather, games. But again, we needed to go back to NetBase and see if these categories were more popular than the ones we already determined. And they were. <laughs> uh, with the exception of photo and video apps, which again, by far, is the most loved um, and again, very talked about category, mobile games, music, weather, and navigation beat out the other categories that we were previously looking at. But again, uh, looking at the most loved and also popular photo and video apps and music apps are two great uh, things that we determined had a real room for potential. So again, how do we use NetBase to get to this information? Uh, we looked at brand names. So we pull up in, I don't know how familiar everybody is with NetBase, but in the topic we put in the brand names and we actually use the categories. So games app was one topic music apps, navigation apps, and such. We also use the alternative brand names once again because you may be talking about a great killer game app, but you may say, hey, my game on my phone is great. Uh, instead of a navigation app, you may say GPS app or map app. So we started to try to think of all the ways you could voice the different categories. We also excluded the word game. We noticed a lot of games would come up in other categories, so unless it was a true game, we didn't want it to show up on weather apps. So we excluded games and data training as well. So this kind of talks about what are those top five app categories, where we see some room for improvement, those top five devices and such. Um, so now I would like to turn it over to MJ, who's going to talk to you specifically about the top ten applications. Alright, thank you, Danae. And hey, let me start the second part of the presentation. And here is how we got the top 10 apps from the NetBase. The phrase, the best mobile app, was first entered into the NetBase. Well, we decided to eliminate the term the best because we thought it will only generate the results within the specific boundaries. And our team interprets the meaning top as most mentioned. So we decided to eliminate the descriptive, descriptive terms like the best so that being said, we put mobile app as a branding into the net base. And here is the list of top 10 apps that we got from the net base. Twitter, Facebook, Google Apps, Amazon, eBody, XMS, Bible App, Netflix, YouTube, Skype, and Instagram. So now we have the top 10 apps, but we needed uh, better insights. So more thoughtful research was done. The name of each app, was, each app was entered as a brand name in order to eliminate any brand name results that were not made in relation to that brand's application. The following phrases, app, apps, mobile app, mobile apps, and mobile applications uh, were entered in the include section of the net base. With this information, we came up with the brand passion index of top 10 apps. And let's take a look at the Twitter and Facebook apps here. Those two apps have most number of uh, sound bites. And also those two apps have uh, the more number of the negative buzz compared to the others. And I also would like to point out that 
health of the apps on the entertainment purpose, including YouTube, Netflix, and Instagram. And now, let me walk you through with more detail how we got the top 10 apps from the Netflix. And this is the screenshot we got from the Netflix with a mobile app as a brand name. After some consideration, it was determined that only apps that generated a surplus of positive buzz would be considered, so the positive filters was applied. And this is the screenshot we got after positive filter is applied. And as you can see, negatively mentioned apps are excluded. And from this list, we find only the names of the apps, and those apps are circle in red. And then the number of sound bites attributed to that app was considered for each app's name to come up with the brand question index that I showed you earlier. All right. To determine what online was considered to be the most significant likes and dislikes of the top 10 apps, first, a separate topic was created for each of the apps in the previous section, and initially, it did not return insightful results. However, when the phrase app was included in the brand name and the alternative names for each of the brands additional input in the net base, the results were more perceptive. So when we searched like Facebook, we didn't only put Facebook, but instead we put Facebook apps and the results was more perceptive. Positive filter was applied to eliminate meaningless attributes and the data was exported to Microsoft Excel to determine the meaningless, uh, to determine which were the best attributed of the top 10 apps. And this is a screenshot of the Excel file. All right, as you can see, all the top 10 apps are free. In fact, mentioned in nine of the top 10 apps, top five bytes. Health of the top 10 apps likes reference the loop of the application and health of the apps mentioned their ease of use. So it is evident that any new um, successful new application must embody these traits. For dislikes, data also exported to the Microsoft Excel uh, to determine which traits were the most disliked of the top 10 apps. We would like to point out that the attribute the people mentioned several times here is dealing with the slowness of the application. And also, it is a little strange that the eBody XMS application had no negative sound words here. And we're assuming that not many people know about this app by looking at the number of sound bytes generated by the net base. And only the people who truly like this app mention the application eBody XMS. And this is the infograph we came up with, with all the information we have so far. I know this is a little blurred, so please refer to page number 32 of the report. To determine the strength of the top 10 app's social media presence, a comparison was conducted. As you can see, the application for Twitter and the Facebook and Google generated more than twice the amount of buzz of the fourth highest ranking app, which is the Amazon. However, as I mentioned earlier when I talked about the BPI of the top 10 apps, Twitter and the Facebook generated more negative buzz attributed to, attributed to their brands than any of the bottom eight applications generated at all. And now, Amanda will talk about our next killer app. Okay, so just to reiterate, we learned that the top performing de devices are all Apple-based iOS platforms, and that each of the top 10 applications are easy to use, have an appealing look, and are available at no cost to users. Okay, with this in mind, we present to you Audio Jam. Audio Jam will combine 
music, audio recording with some voice modulation and synthesizers, video recording with some basic video filters, photos with some basic photo filters, and social media. And we're going to make sure it's compatible with Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube because we know they have such a strong presence already on smart devices. And we'll also ensure that it's available with personal, compatible with personal email and text messaging services because some people don't like Facebook. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to make sure it's available on Apple products such as the iPhone, the iPhone, the iPod Touch, and the iPad. And we're going to make sure that it's available for free to users. Okay, now this isn't the first application that's kind of doing a lot of the things we're talking about. For example, lip snips, you can tag bit friends in videos that you post on Facebook and Twitter, but you can't do much else the application, it's not that interesting. Then with iMovie, it's a video editing software that is already available on Apple products, but it's available at a cost of $4.99 for users. Now, Social Cam, you can apply video filters and share videos with friends, but it's on Social Cam's own social network, and we don't see people wanting to stray outside of Facebook and Twitter when they already have all of their friends so established there. Double Twist Player is a media player for Android, and it just plays things back. It doesn't do a whole lot else for you. Then Filmic Pro is... Anyway, and Vidi is video editing and uploading, but none of these include photos and audio manipulation as well. Now, as you can see, while there's generally a high amount of buzz for most of the... for Vidi and iMovie, only those two applications are generating a lot of buzz, and the sentiment is, isn't that strong about it. People are just kind of meh. Whereas the apps that are generating a great deal more passion, not a lot of people seem to be talking about them. Also, we can see that Filmic Pro and iMovie cost a lot of cost users money, whereas the free applications, only Photo Jam will have the greatest number of features that users can customize. So, with this in mind, we want to talk about the type of people that we think Photo Jam will appeal to. Now, we think that there are a lot of different type, personality types that will want to use a soft, uh, software like this, but we need people who already are interested in having their voice heard even louder on social media platforms. So, for, say, creative personality types, you've got kids who can express themselves with Photo Jam. Uh, while other applications let them just dance around to a music video or something along those lines. Only with Photo Jam will kids be able to actually record their own audio track and manipulate the audio files and the video files that are at play. And then they'll be really easy to share with their friends with just a click of a button. Then for teenagers, teenagers will be able to differentiate and express themselves in more unique ways with Photo Jam's voice modulators and other features. Then Let's consider the sentimental types, like moms. Moms have started using Facebook and Twitter a lot more often. Now, for moms, they'll be able to share their baby's first steps, the baby's first walk, first words, all in one video, and they'll be able to combine everything together, and all of these precious memories will be captured and enhanced. Teens will be able to preserve the memories of high school to the music of the era, however questionable and college students will be able to set music to their slideshows of pictures from parties, or tell the story of what was going on in a series of pictures, add music to a video that was going on, and it will help them preserve these memories as well. Now for self-expressive types, we see that they'll be able to preserve the true essence of an image or video without overlaying <coughs> audio file. Again, for kids, they'll be able to let their voices sing out. The voice modulator and equalizer will enable users to create their own voice effects and fix the tone when their voice just isn't quite on key. And Buddy Jam will give kids the chance to be pop stars they've always dreamed of being. For teens and college students, they can have a joke spoken out over this slideshow as well. So we believe that Photo Jam will combine audio, video, and photo manipulation 
It's the user's desire for their smart devices in one convenient package and at no cost to users. That's what we believe the way is the next